So this, we're in Das Tvunos, we're in Simon Kufi Dalit, and the bilingual new edition, page 250. So this happens to be a, so, still more of an esoteric, it's going to be a little bit more of an esoteric Kabbalistic day. So even if we, if we don't get the details of what's going on in the Kabbalistic worlds when we're talking about how Hashem created things, that's a very complicated topic. How did God create certain aspects of the world? We're saying that the way he created evil is different than the way that he created good. So even if we don't understand the specifics of what we're doing now, the I think a concept that we can all take out of here is that the spiritual world is just as complex, perhaps more complex, than the physical world. Right? Anyone who's gone to high school biology studied a little bit about the human body and about how nature interacts and how all the different species of animals and plants and humans, how we all need each other for survival and the circle of life, if you will. Just like the human world is, what, what, was that like a phrase from something? So just like the physical world is so complicated, also the spiritual world is also very complicated. People think that we just pray, and uh, you know it's like a vending machine. We pray, and then God gives us what we need, like that. And they don't realize, we often don't realize that there's also a spiritual world, which we can't perceive, obviously, with our physical senses, but we can perceive with our neshamas. And that's what we talked about, Tim Tim Halev, uh, on Thursday, how that can blunt our perception of the spiritual world. But there is a vastly complicated spiritual world out there. So now we're learning a little bit about it. So the question was that the Ramchal was dealing with now is that, or the issue we're talking about is that God created good as a directly and he created evil indirectly. Right, that's what we said. So now we're getting into the specifics how he did that. So we said originally that God creates good through a positive force and evil is created by withholding some of his emanations, withholding some of his what's called hashba in Hebrew. Now, The question that the Ramchal asked was, that's great but for certain things, like we said a person who's totally healthy, he has a full hashpah from Hashem, full emanations coming from Hashem, full, what's called hashpah's emanations, divine energy, for lack of a better term. So that's coming to from God to people. And when he stops that hashpah, a person dies. If he withholds some of it, he is sick. He doesn't have those hashpahs. He's on this, uh, he, he's a sick person, doesn't receive all the emanations from Hashem. Now, the Ramchal asks, the Neshama asks the Seichel, that's very good for a being that's like, sort of, but there are certain things that are totally evil. We're talking like the Yitzhahara, things like that, they're totally uh, evil. So how does Hashem create that? You can't create something from a lack of emanations, right? By not doing something, you don't create anything. So now we're going to get a little more into the specifics of how Hashem created evil. And uh, he actually has, if you have this edition, he has a two-page introduction, all in English, to explain this next part. So we'll try our best to understand it. But if we don't understand it, the idea is to remember that Hashem created the world with a complicated spiritual world. Amar HaSeichel says the intellect, And when we say that Hashem created the world, First he created a general creation, let's say, a general world of emanations. Right? That was the first step. He didn't, Hashem could have created the world in any way he wanted. We see from reading the Psukim of Voracious, the first verses in Genesis, that he created the world in steps. Right? Hashem didn't have to do that, but we see he did. So the first thing was that he created a general spiritual world, we'll call it. And after that, only after that, he created the details. Perush. First, the natural, we'll call it the spiritual elements. And afterwards, the details. When Hashem wanted to make in the world good and evil, first he created these hashpos. And this was good. These emanations, the spiritual energy from Hashem. Then some of this hashpah, some of this divine energy, Hashem withheld. He removed some of it, meaning the way that it should really be properly arranged and different different conditions. So he didn't make it totally, he withheld, let's say, he could have, this original uh, divine energy, he could have made perfect. 
in one shot, but he withheld some stuff from it so that it wasn't totally interacting properly with each other. Now, had he made it totally perfect without holding anything back, there would be only good in the world and no evil. But in this original creation, this, uh, uh, should I it's not a creation, this original hashba, Hashem withheld a little bit. Now this lacking that Hashem withheld in the original general hashba creation, that gave birth to lacking in the world, in deficiency. And this is evil. And since there wasn't a constant divine hashba, divine, divine energy of good, and there was something lacking, that gave birth afterwards to pure evil. He's going to continue to explain. And after Hashem made this general uh, spiritual energy in the general sense, then only after that, stage two, is to make the details and to make the particulars. Some good and some bad. For sure, the particulars were also made with divine emanations of Hashem. Because we already said the concept that everything that exists in the universe is only from Hashem's Hashpah. But the second Hashpah, the second emanation of divine energy, comes after the first one. So first we have a general Hashpah, a general divine energy coming and that in that Hashem withheld a certain aspect of it and only after that he made a second hashpa that's when we have the particular creation so the first one was a general thing which with the with with which he withheld some stuff and the second thing was to make the particulars so he took from that original hashpa and made things that were what he needed for good and evil and any and any uh, combination of the two. Now I'm not saying, he says, that Hashem totally withheld his divine emanation. Because if Hashem would have done that, then all of creation would cease to exist. And this is a withholding, a withholdingness that can't create anything. Of but rather we're saying that Hashem withheld a little bit of his hashpah. Just that the proper composition of it was stopped. And this is similar to a person who gets sick and doesn't die. So too is the existence of this general hashpah, the stage one. That um, it gets messed up with this little hashpa, not the full amount. And that's when evil comes about from this deficiency that's in the original hashpa, in the original stage one, that will cause about when Hashem makes that it breeds about pure evil. So we have this, this concept that we said originally. If we remember, we said that the way God describes creating evil is a different word in Hebrew than the way he he creates good. So we have now that Hashem is directly creating good. He doesn't directly make evil. It's from the, the withholding of his goodness that evil will evolve into existence. So we have again. So the question was, you're telling me that Hashem doesn't create evil. So we have pure evil things in this world. So to put it simply or however simply we could we could say it, is that there were two stages. First, there was a stage where Hashem made a general world of his hashba, just his emanation, and in that general world, he withheld some of it. He withheld the proper composition of how it should be. And then in the second stage, when he's making the particulars, that the evil evolved from those deficiencies. So it was all traced back to Hashem making it, but he doesn't create it directly, uh, the evil, as, uh, as he does the good. And uh, next week, don't worry, it's going to get a little more uh, simple. Uh, this was like, I think, the most complicated week and the most uh, specific. But he's, uh, the reason we're getting into this is because we're talking about how the purpose of the universe is for that evil 
will eventually become destroyed. So he's talking about originally how evil came into existence, and he's going to talk about, we're in the section now where we're talking about evil. So what is this thing that's going to be destroyed? So the first step was to talk about, well, how did God create evil? So that's what we're talking about now. Now it's going to go on next time to other topics related to, uh, related to evil. Oh, wow. okay.